Hey everybody, this is Travis Weller. Thanks again for joining me for the Two Minute Clinic. Um, you know, I had this really awesome opportunity back in December to bring the music of three friends uh, to a, a complete uh, festival band. And joining me today is Jude Gore, Mark Sarofchek, and Rob Tra, the composers uh, of, the, of those pieces. And we had a really awesome time on the Friday afternoon of the festival just talking about our life as a composer and talking about our own creative process and how we work through things. And I really wanted to sort of extend that conversation and, and let the three of us sort of get in the same room together again and uh, share with all of you uh, just a little bit more. So I, I'll just start, Jude, if it's okay, uh, we'll go in concert order and I'll start with you. Um, but if we could just first talk about your creative process, like where does it begin and, and how does it go? And uh, we can then follow, uh, follow down to Rob and then, then Mark uh, can chime in when he's ready. Well, sure. Well, uh, thanks for having me on here. I'm really honored to be here and be part of this group. Um, you know, as far as the creative process, sometimes it, it doesn't flow like you would like it to. Uh, you know, usually you'll, you'll get, whether it's a commission or something that you need to do, um, and you think, okay, I've got to write this piece, or here's an idea I have, and you sit down, and then nothing happens. <laughs> and I think we've all been there. It's, it, I've told students writing uh, music is kind of like writing an essay. The scariest thing is looking at that blank page. And so, um, you know, a couple of things, sometimes just always trying to think of stuff in your head. A lot of times the whole piece will start to write itself in the shower or driving in the car. Usually it's when you can't write stuff down. That's usually when it starts to come to you the best. Um, but also I find that just sing some things at a piano and just doodling, I guess, and just seeing what, what you stumble upon. Um, and usually if I can get something down, then it, I find it a lot easier from there to evolve it uh, and start to take whatever direction I need to go. Uh, I, I've done it a couple different ways. I've planned out the entire piece and then filled it in from there. And other times I've just started to begin at the beginning and, and written. Um, and you know, that either of those involves going back and doing a lot of editing, as you all know. Uh, but it, it, it kind of it depends. It, it changes for me. But uh, it, it seems like the most structured way, sitting down, planning out what you're going to write, and then just writing is, is sometimes the hardest approach. It, it, the music happens the way it wants to happen. Um, and it just it's for you to listen for it in your head and turn it into something from there. Yeah, and, and that's, man, Jude, that's such a, a, great, a great insight. And Rob, I, I know you've had some, some instances where things didn't go necessarily as you, as you wanted it to, and, and, and you found yourself writing it in, what I, is it fair to say, a better place because it didn't go as planned? Yeah, I, th I think that, uh, you know, a, a part of the composing process is just like improvising slowly. So, uh, learning how to do that, and I'm still learning, you know, the more I, I learn about composing and, and studying other people's works, the, the more I realize I don't know. Um, so then it just keeps opening the door to other opportunities of study. But, you know, for me right now, um, I'm always just you know, editing uh, myself. So, for example, like uh, the, the first piece I, I really honed in on was... Um, uh, a fleeting moment, and that piece has a lot of just material in it. And I remember being in grad school, and and Lynn Per saying to me, uh, uh, "You need to just take one of these ideas and make expand upon that." And uh, so I ended up cutting out whole sections of, of material and just putting it into a finale file and saving it for later, for maybe to develop at some other point. But um, just learning how to edit yourself and and develop ideas. Um, uh, to their maximum potential. Mark, in, in terms of your, uh, when, when you're into that creative process, how about you? Are you finding those same kind of so moments? To, to echo with what both Jude and Rob have said, um, you know, like Jude said, you, you often find that it's the most inopportune times when you can't write something down that you, you you have a great idea. I, I texted Rob just last week and I said, dude, I feel like I just wrote an entire piece on my walk today. And he's like, sing it into the phone, dude. That's how I, like I started doing that. And you can keep the ideas going, you know, 
Um, there's, there's times too where you sit there and you spend a week on it and, and another week and you're just like, I can't get this right and I need to walk away for a little bit. And like for me, especially because I, I enjoy staying physically active um, and whenever, whenever the gym is open, swimming is one of those things that I really enjoy doing. And I, I think because it drowns out the sounds of everything else when I'm underwater, I can focus on solely what's going on in here and um and not hearing the sounds of cars or even like the music playing um i've been going on, on my walks without headphones in right now just so that it, it doesn't take away uh an idea that i'm trying to to develop a little bit more and um and i found success with that recently because i come back and i just kind of just tinker around on the piano a little bit more and figure out okay this is exactly what i was going for here's the key that we were in and, and things like that you know um but you know to, to touch on what rob was saying about improvising i mean that's something that i'm still developing and i'd imagine that all of us will still continue to work on developing that too um one of my professors in grad school mr mark ford did a an entire clinic one friday on composing and how he starts and he said i just sit at the marimba and I just, I come up with ideas and, oh, that's nice. And how can I, how can I take this one idea and develop it even more? And, um, and I, I, so I think that like the three of us and, and four of us actually, including you would probably fall in those same lines of, oh, I have this, how can I let it marinate even more? And when I walk away from it and come back to it, do I feel like it's stronger or is it still in the same place? And, you know, there's there's two things there, and I, I guess, Jude, you, you sort of touched on it at first, and, you know, I'll, I'll let you guys chime in on this, and Mark, you talked about it, you know, through swimming, through staying active, and that, that time to just meditate, and, um, you know, I, I had somebody ask me the one time, well, like, you know, does it just come to you? <laughs> and it's like... Um, yeah, I don't mean to, mean to <laughs> seem like magic, but there, there's those moments where something just sort of snaps in your mind. And, you know, the subconscious mind sort of works through the problem of, well, you know, I was, I know you were working on these eight measures and you're trying to get this transition. You're trying to get this development just right. I think I have a solution. And my problem was it always came like my seventh grade, eighth grade general music class would be walking in the door and that's when it would arrive. Mm -hmm. And I would just be like, ah, oh, okay, I got to teach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, guys, four minutes. <laughs> it, it, just, you know, and so there I was. That's when I first started recording things on my phone. I'm like, okay, I've got to, I've got to save this now, and I've got to get to it later. Um, you know, and, and so then just, uh, and guys, like how much, um, you know, it, throughout the throughout your busy week, and, and I know you all have different things on your plate, and it whenever life is normal, but how much time do you just take to, to be silent, to let that music have a, have a time to come to you? Not as much time as I would like, <laughs> to be completely honest. You know, I, I have two kids. Anyone with kids understands that those, those quiet moments are few and far between. Uh, just put my three-year-old down for a nap right before walking into here. Um, but you, you take them when you can get them. Mark talked about uh, going on walks and, and I've been trying to do some running and jogging running mixed with walking um and, and I, I do listen to music or podcasts a lot but sometimes it is nice to just not have that distraction and let your mind come up with things and and travis like you said about it comes to you sometimes at the worst times i was just thinking about uh, a piece that mark actually asked me right for his, his uh kids a number of years ago so uh, his freshman concert band um called overdrive and i had a main theme motif written and was trying to figure out where to go with the B theme. And I still specifically remember coming up with that while I was on sixth grade lunch duty, standing in there watching them. They they had the little freeze pops and yeah, we had to go around and cut them with scissors. That was a lot of fun. And uh, yeah, and sticky. And, but but that, I remember being in that room and it, that B theme coming to me and going, I got, I got to write that down. So as soon as lunch due is over, right back to my room and I'm right, literally writing it down on paper so I wouldn't forget it. And it just, it comes at the, sometimes the most inopportune times. And also a caveat to what you said about, does it just come to you? Well, yes, but there's a lot of bad stuff that comes to us too, I, at least for me. There's a lot in there I think, oh, okay, no, that's not good at all. <laughs> and you just 
sometimes let it go um, and you just try and grab onto the things that have potential. Uh, Rob, do, are you opening your bad ideas book? Is that what I just saw yeah. on the screen? Yeah, actually, I was just going to say to Jude that like, yeah. I, I, I take this, this is literally, let's see if I can just show you, like it's a little notebook of, of staff paper. Yeah. yeah. And so it has room for me to write on it also. And so like when I'm feeling uh, like in the mood to just sit at the piano uh, and even play through stuff that's like not mine, um, I'll, I'll just sit and clunk through some things. I'm a, uh, what they, I play composer's piano, uh, but the uh, the idea is I, I just have this next to me, and if if something like comes to me by playing someone else's music or um, just noodling around on the piano, then I'll I'll write it down and save it for later. So then I'll I'll just mark the date, you know what what I was doing, and and write down like small things. It's not like I'm I'm sitting here writing like a full orchestrated something, but like maybe just like a, a series of harmonies or a series uh, of m melodies that may work together and and for for some time down the road to to process those and and dive into them a little bit more but as far as the the creative you know like finding inspiration i i uh, like mark i i tried to and and jude both I, i'll talk about both of those but like mark i i try to get out and take hikes uh somewhere where i can just hear like the world like as it exists and yesterday i, I uh, Travis, I saw you commented on my Instagram post, uh, but I, I like to take like videos of like those moments that are like really just beautiful so I can like remember them. And um, yesterday I was at Moraine just walking one of the trails at, at Moraine with my dog and and I found this like beautiful like series of pine trees and I just stood there for a moment and listened. And uh, uh, just those moments to me help help to like clear and, and Travis, you mentioned about like the subconscious um, working out issues. And it's in those moments where I'm just like, okay, trying to let the rest of the world go away for a minute that I, I'm allowing myself to breathe and, and uh, approach the problem from a, a, a different perspective. Um, but it, same with Jude, like I, I find myself, you know, I had, when I listen to music, I don't know about you guys, but when I listen to music, I'm always like the switch turns on and it's, it's very rarely do I sit and listen and, and just enjoy. <laughs> and 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 just like turn off that that like musician switch and all the time I'm like okay you know what what is that progression even in pop music I'm like okay how how would I transcribe this mm -hmm. and so um, I find myself listening to a lot of podcasts and uh, about like artistic process or even just like news one of my favorite news podcasts is the Daily and it's a New York Times thing and it's just awesome the way it's put together but like I'm listening to the podcast for the news but then I'm also listening to that specific podcast for the pacing of it and I'm analyzing like how did they put it together and and so when we're finding inspiration I, I find a lot of inspiration in like other um, uh, areas of, of artistic you know, like creation so uh, for example like one of one of the shows that I've been binge watching uh, is on Apple TV plus it's, it's called home and it, it's just about these people who built their own homes and how they went through the process of that. There's a, something on Netflix called Chef's Table. It is just amazing uh, series of just going into these people's restaurants and and uh, learning how they approach you know their craft at the highest level. And and so things like that I find just incredibly inspiring. Uh, after I watch something like that, I'm like, all right, I'm going to sit down at the piano at like 1 a.m. and quietly plunk through something um but that those are the moments to me like if you try and sit down and say okay i gotta compose this it, it doesn't it doesn't always work that way so forced yeah and to kind of to follow up on on what all of you have been saying like like rob and i definitely have talked about like the nature aspect of things and, and me like simple beauties of life like whenever I see the paintings in the sky at night and the way that the sun's setting and the creations that happen with the colors and the clouds, that to me is one of those moments where I need it. I go outside in my driveway, I'll take pictures. We'll be in one of our very few night rehearsals that we have for marching band. And I just stop and I say, we all need to take this moment because we need to appreciate what, and it's a sky appreciation moment. And it's to the point now where when something like that's happening and like this past fall, we had a beautiful sky down in Ross Draver 
right by the high school and we were up there for a bonfire or something and the students came running in they're like rob you need to come outside and see this right now because it's getting ready to like the, the sun's going down and it was absolutely just stunning and it's it's stuff like that that i i just gravitate towards because it it's a break from every day you know it like we it's it's just it's not part of the norm because they happen so few and far between. And like, for me, that's stuff that I really gravitate towards, or even like what Rob was saying about like those shows, taking an interest outside of something of music, I find so much more fascinating and appreciate music that much more whenever I come back to it, you know? And, and I think that's why I enjoy working out so much and staying physically healthy. Um, because it, it allows me to escape to a completely different place than what our our regular jobs and careers do but um you know we all need a a breathe or a, a, we all need a breather from what we do in our craft as well because you know as much as i want to sit there and think that um von williams and beethoven and mozart and all those guys all they did was compose for 15 hours a day i'm fairly certain that they did it and um, we all have to step away in order to come back and feel stronger. Um, you know, like Jude was saying about like, sometimes you, you sit down, you have an idea, and sometimes it just comes to you at the most inopportune times. I remember the, um, it was spring, no, fall of 2014. And it was the very first year that we had AP Theory at our high school. And I had a really good group of seniors and a couple of juniors. And, um, I don't know what we were talking about, but I said, it's like, and I sat down at the piano and the impact of letting go just came out. It just like, and we had like 10 minutes left of class. I said, you guys take the rest of the period, start your home. I need to write this down. I need to write this down. And that's, you know, it, that's how it came. And that's one of those pieces that was written in, in different parts. Like there's, and it's, you know, that may not be organic or it may be organic. Like I, that all depends on how you define it. Um, I think there's only been one piece that I've been able to write from beginning to end and that was a spring ago. But um, you know, like everything else, it happens in spurts. And, um, and there's times like I, I was, um, Bob Match had asked Rob and I to write a duet for him and his sister for French horn and trombone and I sent, one of the sketches to Rob to take a listen to and to Jude. And both of them said, dude, there's this like two measures in there that it's, I said, yeah, it was just filler stuff for the time. <laughs> just because like you, you feel like you need to put something. So it's just not empty, you know, but um, I don't know if I just got off on a tangent or if I'm actually making sense right now, but um, <laughs> I, I think the thing for me is that being able to have activities that allows me to step away from music makes me appreciate when I come back to it that much more. And you know, Mark, as you were saying that, it made me realize that you know your appreciation for these picturesque landscapes and sunrises, sunsets, and these different uh, things of nature, I can 100% hear that in your music. As you're saying that, I'm thinking about, you know, some of the things in letting go or some of those pieces and like, yeah, I can, I can hear that. Thanks buddy. So, uh, I didn't say it was a compliment. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, really, it is. It is. And, but you know, nature and the world can provide great inspiration for you, but sometimes you got to get away from it too, to, to let that develop into something. You know, the thing and getting back to, uh, getting back to Netflix for a minute. Um, I love uh, the chef show with John Favreau. Uh, and Roy Choi, and uh, Roy Choi, the, the chef who trained Favreau for his role in Chef. And it's interesting to see an artist like Favreau, you know, delving into something that is definitely outside of his element and trying to learn everything that he can. But he also understands that, you know, like, you know, a chef has to apprentice and it has to do, go through a, a, a progression and grow in experiences and everything. And, um, and, and just to touch on something, both Mark and Rob, that you hit on, and, and I think that the current pandemic that we are in, um, for a lot of us in the creative arts, we tend to appreciate the simplicity of things. 
and we we tend to appreciate um, the simple beauties in life and we're not necessarily people who take those things for granted and so now when we're in a place in society right now where our everyday normal the thing that we maybe sort of did take for granted um, has been completely upended. It, it, it does change our mindset a little bit in, in terms of, you know, well, what, what, what's next for me? What's next for my art? Yep. You know, comparing it to, um, when you're talking about comparing it to other uh, mediums, it, it, I forget, somebody said something earlier just now um, that reminded me of this. But, uh, you know, Jack Stamp, who both Mark and I studied with for years, um, you know, he, one of the things he said about, hey, you want to learn, you want to take composition lessons from Gustav Mahler, you want to take lessons from uh, Beethoven, you want to take lessons from Mozart, you can. Go pull out their, go to the music library and get one of their scores and just listen or just read it listen to it and see how they constructed the things they did. There's, there's a, a music lesson right there for you. If you uh, compare, comparing it to a, an engineer or a mechanic, you know, a lot of times you hear engineers, that type of person who will say, all, all growing up, I was taking stuff apart and seeing how it works and putting them back together. And it's the same thing. Yeah. You hear something you really like, you hear that Mahler symphony. And I, Mahler's the one I come back to Mahler and Holst. Those are the two I listen to and go, man, I wish I'd written that. And, and I know I couldn't because it's, it's Mahler and Holst, but I, I can listen to their stuff and then I can pull up a score or, you know, go look one up, which is great too, because they're both in public domain. So you can find them on IMSLP or right. somewhere and, and say, okay, how did he do that? How do you get this sound? How do you create this, this soundscape? How do you, what chord did he do there? What's the, the structure he used? And, and it's a great way to just, get inspiration from that as well, as far as the technique part of things, not, you know, the inspiration is, is great and getting these ideas in your head, but then being able to put it down on paper or in the computer is something else altogether. And that, and a lot of times that's the bottleneck for people. And it's like, man, I can hear it up here. I get the entire piece. I got like an entire 20 minute symphony right here. I can't get it here. Right. Yeah, Jude, that, that. Jude, who do you, who do you listen to and who do you study the most? And, uh, Rob and Mark, feel free to chime in on that. Who 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 do you go to? Who who are the people you study? Uh, I really, as far as composers, the ones that I tend to gravitate towards are your late Romantic, early 20th century composers. I, I really like some of the neo Romantic composers, uh, Samuel Barber, uh, some of these guys like like I mentioned Holst. Uh, those that they still have a great melody. I feel like you got to have a, a a good melody in your music. Um, you don't have to, but I, I, I like, no, that. you do. I, 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 I think so. Um, there are smarter men than I and, and smarter women than I who would, who would say otherwise, but yeah, I agree. I think it needs to have a good melody. Um, and, and these guys who would take these modern rhythms, these modern, uh, sounds and harmonies, but at the same time you hear callbacks to Tchaikovsky and Beethoven and, and it's just that, 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 fusion between the different styles i really like that sort of thing that's what i tend to listen to a, a lot yeah rob or mark how about you guys yeah i i um i i jump all over the place so like recently um a couple composers that are uh really just doing some outstanding stuff um uh, like Joel Puckett for me is has these just um, uh, amazing like textural and harmonic like ideas and, that are just fascinating. So I, I bought a couple scores and been going through that. Um, and then I have a whole drawer of scores over there. So like when I'm going through my process uh, of composing, like I'll 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 get out some of those scores and and have them just sitting around, you know. And if I encounter a problem like we talked about earlier, then I'll start uh, referencing like. Um, like the bag of tricks, you know, so-and-so composer had, you know, did something like this. And so I'll, I'll, I'll run over and study, study that and how they did that. And that may inspire and filter through like what I'm doing and, and uh, manifest in a different way, but it's been inspired by, you know, and Jude alluded to this is, is, uh, has been inspired by someone who's, you know, nothing that in my opinion, there are very few people that are going to do something really new and, uh so everything else to me is is like 
um, inspired by and filtered through um, <laughs> the lens of, of, of what, you, what you have to offer. Um, we but, all stand on the shoulders of giants. Yeah. Yep. You know, when, when we were in undergrad, um, Dr. Stamp once said, the art of originality is the ability to hide your resources. And we, we steal from everybody. We do. And, but is it stealing or is it learning and appreciating what they do? You know, um, like the number of times that I've looked at scores of the three of yours and said, man, how did they get that? Because <laughs> I, I just love the sound of it. And, and like, and it's, it's like, it's several times. Um, I also listen to a lot of percussion ensemble music too. You know, I mean, my, my roommate in college was Chad Honey and Chad is just doing some phenomenal things um, internationally as, with his writing as well. And, but even locally to Pittsburgh, some, like some of the things that he's been writing. Um, I, choral music, I always go back to Morton Lordson. Um, you know, I sang in chorale whenever I was at IUP in undergrad and being, ex um, being exposed to a monument theorem from a vocal aspect completely changed the way that I started listening to things as well because I mean, I do believe that the human voice is, is, is the most pure instrument that we'll ever experience. And, um, but like his harmonies are just, just gorgeous, those clusters. And you start listening to more composers now who reference a lot of those, those closer knit harmonies that you're like, you know what? I get it because they're, they're just gorgeous. And like a lot of, there's been times where people just like, Probably in the 90s, people were afraid to do those tone clusters like that because it just sounded angry. Um, and then, like, all of a sudden, it became a more normal thing. You know, I mean, I, I think it's fair to say that we've all been influenced by our own teachers as well. And, um, you know, the things that they've written, the things they've programmed. Um, I also think, too, uh, I, at one point, I wanted to look into getting a, a composition degree this is like in the last few years and um you know I've, I've had a couple of friends who were professors say dude just get some good scores and to me <laughs> the master to go back to is Alfred Green you know his orchestrating and same with Persichetti it, it just I, it, it blows me away I it, it's just so good and um but like I I think it's easy to um to want it impersonate your your teachers in your own voice as well and so you know it's the the very first thing i wrote is um kind of like an homage to dr stamp because of the influence that he had on me and and all of us as students as well like a game of telephone uh take something that you're learning and i think you said about the difference between stealing or being inspired by Right. Um, and and it, Rob, you it's mentioned sampling. It, it's sampling. sampling. That's right. Not stealing. Rob, you mentioned about it being a filter. Take something that you've that you want that you get get inspired by, and then do that, but put your own spin on it and help that music to evolve into something different. Yeah, I, I mean, you you think about, um, and I do sort of chuckle, um, you know, in watching different cooking shows and things, and. You, you watch how there are authentic elements that are taken from other cultures and they are Americanized for a, a lack of a better way to say it and how they're transformed into something that is sort of familiar, but yet is a little bit new. And I mean, I think we can, we can look at a number of different creative mediums. We can see that in architecture, we can see it in dance, we can see it in um, you know, sculpture where, whereby things are being borrowed and, and things are being transformed and things are, uh, you know, viewed as, you know, finally something new. Um, you know, I, I think it was, uh, I, I think it was the bare, that my biggest fear is, you know, I'll start writing something and, and the bare naked ladies kicking in my mind. And all of a sudden I find my singing, it's all been done before. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, so what can I do to make this, you know, different? What can I do that it's going to, sound fresh, that it's going to sound engaging, that it's going to sound interesting. Because I, I think that's sometimes, um, and, and I don't know if, you, if any of you have experienced this, but you know, when, when you sit down and you write, 
I'd never want to be trapped into the feeling that I've got to write music that's going to, um, you know, please somebody else. Like, yes, if it's a commission, I want the commissioning party to be happy and to be satisfied with what I wrote. But I mean, ultimately, I have to be my own, you know, harshest critic. And I also have to be the person that I write in such a way that, it, that it, it's satisfying. Be your own biggest fan as well. Yeah, yeah. Some people have a hard time listening to their music and I try to, I do listen to my mu own music, not necessarily because I think it's better than other music, but I figure if I, if I don't like it, if I'm not enjoying listening to it, how can I expect anyone else to? Yeah, there's a, there's a level of uh, forced un uncomfortability that I think <laughs> is, is appropriate for someone who's creating something like uh, it's not easy to like take something and, and put it out there and uh, for the world to see uh, in any, you know, instance that I can think of, especially with social media. Now there are a lot of, it's very easy to be a critic. Um, so, you know, the hard thing is, is to, to find the courage to share something. And, you know, I believe that what we're doing with co composition is achievable by anybody that's, that's willing to like um, look in, into like studying and just experimenting and, uh, honing in on like what what their voice is and and it's it's it, there's no like formulaic approach that I can think of that that fits every single composer or person that wants to compose something and and uh, but I do believe that everybody you know if you're a musician this is a part of being a musician and it's not something that you know oh the lofty you know compo composition you know I I think I think that you know with teachers, you know, and uh, teachers are just amazing right now. And what you guys are, uh, it's just outstanding. But like teachers to me sometimes make the, the best composers, you guys, because you've had to teach it. You know, you've had, you've had to uh, live, live uh, teaching a clarinet player how to get over the break, you know? And so that, that kind of experience um, informs how, how you write for an ensemble or anybody. Uh, but, you know, I really touched on two things there. And I, I think forced un uncomfortability in, in terms of like, yeah, put something out there. If you want to compose something, do it and put it out there because that's the only way that you can get, get feedback and process and then, you know, go after it again. And the se second thing was um, uh, just, you know, the the role that teachers play in in uh, allowing and providing opportunities to do something like this and modeling um composition i think is just invaluable you know and is to follow up with what rob was saying about the the forced uncomfortable like you just have to, like the vulnerability that you need to be willing to say okay like good bad whatever it sounds like i'm willing to take a listen i i mean that's the only way we grow is if we allow ourselves to be vulnerable enough to open up to critique and if if we're not willing to do that then why are we asking to send it to somebody for their opinion anyway you know um what what do you like what what worked um for you in this what didn't work and why and and whenever you receive that back i think finding that way of instead of going how dare they you say i never thought of that you know, like your openness to, to being, um, to receiving that, that feedback needs to be as open as your openness to sending it out to get that feedback as well. And, um, and I, I think it's easy to not want to put yourself out there. And Rob hit the nail on the head because, you know, the keyboard heroes of the world on social media will sit there and tell you how bad your piece <laughs> is without having ever written a single note their entire life as well. So like, but you also have the number of them that outweigh those keyboard heroes who will sit there and say, hey man, I really like this. And you know, thanks for being willing to share this with us as well. And, and especially, especially in our region here, in region one in Pittsburgh, I mean, I've long felt that everybody is open and receptive to everybody you want to send something, hey, yeah, I'd be more than happy to. When when we all started off, you three are the ones that I still send it to, and you're you're the three that I sent to right from the beginning as well, you know, because I'm you all as, as people, 
and musicians, but like, it's because you're friends and I, like, I know you're going to be honest with, with me. And I knew that I was going to be welcoming to whatever you were going to tell me. And, um, you know, and I think whenever you, you allow yourself to be that vulnerable to say, you know what, let me, let me figure out how to fit their idea into this or like take their feedback for, for the purpose of educating yourself. I think that that's a, a, a very important aspect. It, it takes a lot of courage, you know, to be a musician and to be a composer. Every, every note you play, uh, it, it's 50 50. It can either be right in that context or it can be wrong. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, composing is, is really no different. And that's one of the things that I, I think, uh, Mark, so much of what you said is, you know, you, the ability to, you know, take the critique. And, and, and Rob, as you said, like, you know, sending it and putting stuff out there. Um, yeah, the world can be a very harsh, uh, cruel place. And, and we know that. But, um, you know, our, our courage that we, f we feel confident enough that we want to bring something new to life and, and we want to share it with people. I think it's, I, I think it's really important that we continue to, you know, to continue to encourage because, listen, a, a blank sheet of staff paper is pretty intimidating to a young composer. And for someone who, you know, is, you know, 13 years old and they downloaded Note Flight or whatever, and they're just like, you know, instead of being on Fortnite, they're just cranking out like song after song <laughs> for piano and violin. Like, you know, we've got to encourage the, those kids and, you know, yeah. we, just, we need to remind them about like, hey, uh, let me let me offer you some suggestions. You know, like, and not to, sorry to cut you off. No, 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 you're good. You're good. The, the thing about some of their their video games now that um we didn't have is the the live aspect feeling like you're in a symphony hall listening to that soundtrack being performed now granted i'll, I'll still take you know super mario brothers midi sounds but they they have they have a soundtrack going that is more human than what we experienced growing up and like to be to be able to take an idea then and say you know what I'm going to shut this game system down. I am going to go tinker. I think that that's a pretty incredible tool that they have available as well. So uh, what are you guys working on right now? Is there, is there anything in the shop uh, that you are trying to bring to life during this time when you've got a little bit of, uh, I don't want to call it downtime, but just <laughs> it, it, it sort of is in a, in a way. Is, is there anything that you are getting finally getting back to or perhaps a project you've shelved and and Rob if you even want to talk about uh, free etude Friday um, which I think is such an awesome thing and I've been suggesting it to the uh, some of the Messiah kids that if they want to do some site reading they needed to be checking you out and downloading it so yeah so the free etudes um, I have a like I'm up to this week this Friday will be 20 I'll have a total of 20 and I've been trying to do them each week. I took a couple holidays off. Um, but the, the uh, idea is that every Friday I write for a new instrument and I put it out there for free. And, and really what I'm doing is uh, I'm just sitting down for, I don't know, between one and two and a half hours. And I write something that's all between, I don't know, 40 seconds and a minute and 20 uh, seconds. It's a short etude like piece. And, and uh, for a specific instrument. And the idea is uh, that they're out there for free and it's, it's honing, you know, I'm, I'm using that as an opportunity for me to learn more at the same time. So I'm experimenting a little bit with harmonic ideas and, and um, uh, technical things specific to that instrument and how I hear them and how they may be interpreted. But I'm also putting it in the context of like, for like a high schooler to um, you know bachelor's degree uh, instrumental uh, music person uh, you know someone studying and looking for something short to to learn and and um, uh, maybe even yeah sight reading of some kind but I have them all out there and they're published um, and the idea is that the first person that like records it and tags me in a, in a post um, that student gets to pick a title for it so like last week a friend of mine Bill Red is a director down in Grapevine, in Texas, I believe. And, and um, he passed these out to all his, actually sent his students there to the website and they downloaded these. And all of a sudden I got all these submissions of, and there's all these videos coming up of, of these etudes. And 
And uh, it was really fun to, to see his students perform these and to hear like how they're interpreting them. And, and uh, that's been a real fun project for me because I'm literally going through the Samuel Adler book, uh, The Study of Orchestration, and rereading every single, you know, uh, about, about each instrument. And I, I spend time like the day before reading uh, through those, those specific chapters. And, and uh, then I just sit down and, and try to write something for, for that instrument voice uh, alone, which is really, you know, that's kind of a hard exercise. Uh, I find that it challenges me in the right way. It's kind of like a crossword puzzle every Friday. So um, that's what I'm working on uh, every Friday. But I'm also working on... Um, uh, I'm doing this project with composer David Reeves. He lives in Seattle, Washington. He and I became close um, back when I was teaching at Norwin High School, and he was the percussion arranger at the time. And, and he's just this phenomenal compose, composer and, and uh, percussionist. And, and he and I are working on this like double quartet, or it's an octet of uh, four percussion, four saxophones, and uh, we're co-writing it. So he, we meet like we, we were meeting every week for a while and we're, we decided to go for a month and see what, what happens. But the um, idea is we're, we're sending files back and forth and we're listening to them and giving each other feedback and one movement he's writing wholly and one movement I'm writing wholly and, and then we're collaborating on uh, the other movements. And, and it's been just so cool to work with somebody else and, and uh, uh, write this piece of music because we're, we're hearing things differently and inspiring and pushing each other in, in different ways that may or may not be comfortable. But again, it's that forced uncomfortability that sometimes yields like the most creative results. And so that's been a really fun uh, process. And I believe uh, J Dr. Jason Cush and Dr. David Glover at Slippery Rock are going to lead the, like a consortium for that one. And then um, uh, Cassandra Eisenreich, Dr. Eisenreich uh, at Slippery Rock also just asked me to write a uh, flute choir piece. So I'm, I'm just starting into that process and talking with her about her inspiration and, and she's done remarkable things with that group. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm just having, having fun, like writing for, for these different groups that I thought I'd never have the opportunity to write for. And it was, it was, uh, it's been really humbling experience overall, but it's, it's, that's what I'm working on currently. Like right now, those are, those are like the, the projects at the forefront. I have uh, a couple of uh, marching band shows that uh, you know I'm coming up for this year. One of which is going to be mostly uh, original music, which is exciting because I've never done a completely original show, uh, not as a marching band in that medium before. Um, so trying to come up, you know, get some ideas with that. Um, I have one that I, Travis, I think we talked about this one before. Um, I, I, one thing I wanted to do is I haven't written the completely just slower uh you know slower more ballad like piece i've written music with those sections in them um but not as a whole and so i have this idea for one actually i the title came to me in a dream it's weirdly enough and it's not the best grammar but i, I was like but i have this title and i kind of want to run with that and so i was able to come up with a melody and i have a little an introduction and i haven't done as much with it lately but i've sat on it. it's one thing i want to sit down and and come back to um and then i have another uh, a piece that doesn't need a commission for an original that doesn't need to be done until next year. So I haven't thought as much about that one, but uh, just having a number of different ideas uh, bouncing in right now. But the one slower piece is the one that I would like to, and I haven't brought myself to do it, but sit down and start. Like I said, I have a melody at least. So, and I've I've done a lot in my head. I'd like to sit down, and start putting that down, and and do something with it at this point. You know, the 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 thing that Rob was saying about the Etude Fridays. What's nice about that is for you, especially, is that we can all agree it's it's kind of hard to write when you have nothing to write for. Um, sometimes you need something to say, oh, I gotta get this done for this project. I need to have it done for this or by this date. And so, you know, you setting yourself, well, I gotta write this etude for this Friday and I'm gonna do it for this Friday. Just give yourself something to write for. Yeah. And, and it's good practice. It's great practice. And yeah. it's great for the students because, I mean, aren't we all looking for new uh, sight reading material for students and and just getting more music out there is always a good thing yeah i think i think you guys should all write some etude etudes for fridays i was actually going to say that inspired me to want to kind of pick up on on doing that same thing um i i'm kind of finishing up 
and working on some ideas that I've had marinating for a couple years now. Um, there's a, a I, I really want to dive into a, another project coming up soon and hopefully I can generate some ideas for that as well. Um, the whole collaborative thing that Rob's doing sounds really, really incredible. And um, I, I think that's awesome, man. Congratulations. That's fantastic. Um, but nothing, nothing that's like no commissions or anything like that. I've had one or two people reach out for, for something that, you know, may happen uh, next school year and trying to generate a couple ideas already for that. But um, like what I'm currently working on is um, somewhere around a two and a half, three um, lyrical piece. And um, it, it's essentially, I was telling Jude about this on Friday night. Um, it's essentially a, a lullaby and it's going to be dedicated to my two nieces and my nephew. And, um, and they're the, they're the reason behind it and, uh, kind of why I want to put it out there. Um, cause it was originally written as a, a music box lullaby for my niece Emery. And so like, I, I wanted to create a full wind band version of it. Um, that might be suitable for, uh, you know, a, a younger group as well. And, um, but just trying to sit down and, and let that develop a little bit more and, you know, try to figure out, filter, um, how to incorporate elements of my siblings into it as well, since they all play trumpet. So there's a trumpet solo in the middle of it as if they're like singing to them. And, um, and then the, the percussive aspect will, will be there um, just because it's kind of my, you know, my book end of it all. But um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with everything right now. It's, um, you know, it's, it, it's one of those things where I feel like if I take on too much, I am, I'm not going to be happy with the result and I don't want to disappoint the others. And um, so like, you know, I, I'm fortunate for, to, to be able to sit down and kind of plunk some things out now that, you know, now that we know that we're not physically going back to school and I can just walk back to my bedroom, um, taking a break from the computer screen every once in a while. But um, that's, that's kind of where I'm at with developing things at the moment. Well, I'm, um, I have lived in fear uh, for years of Air for Band and um, even a childhood hymn by Holsinger. And so I, uh, just a couple weeks ago, I, I finally finished my lyric work for young band um, called As Moonlight Falls. And nice. yeah, um, and it's, I can honestly say it's not the worst thing I've ever written. So um, now uh, the fact that it's still like, might be compared to Air for Band or, you know, a childhood hymn, like, it still scares me, you know, but, uh, you know, again, we ta already talked about this. Got to have courage in uh, putting things out there. So, um, guys, hey. more good lyrical stuff for young bands. Uh, yeah. Um, we really you know, do. There's, um, there's, a, there's another piece, uh, Carol Chambers. I don't, I don't know if you guys have had a chance to check any of her stuff out, but um, it's called Softly Speaks the Night, and um, I just adore it. It's, it's wonderful. It's touching, moving, great writing. So, um, yeah, good stuff. Guys, thank you. Thank you all so much. And thank you for sharing thank and you. taking time. And um, I really appreciate all your insight. And, um, you know, if it's, uh, listen, any of you who are tuning in, if you want to get in touch with any of these f fine guys, uh, just, you know, drop us a comment or you can seek them out, uh, you know, online. Uh, stalk them on social media. It'll be okay. So, uh, guys, yeah, thanks. thanks again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you for having everybody. us. On this. Yeah. yeah, truly appreciate it. All right, hey everybody, stay safe out there. And uh, this has been the Two Minute Clinic that uh, is slightly longer than two minutes, but by now I think you're all getting used to it. Thanks again, everybody. We'll see you. Good seeing you guys.